Hi guys, it's Lauren. 2022 is here, so I wanted to share 22 healthy habits to start for 2022. The term that girl has become really, really popular over the past year. A girl who's really focused on living a healthy lifestyle, making it look very aesthetically pleasing. I know that there is a lot of toxicity revolving this term. For me personally, it's motivating to show up as that girl. I find it to be healthy because I'm trying to create and continue healthy habits. So yeah, I wanted to share 22 healthy habits for you guys to improve your life in the new year. If you're not already subscribed, go subscribe. Number one is spend more time alone. Spending time alone is so important to be more aware of yourself, what you like, what you don't like, and setting boundaries with other people too. Once you start setting boundaries with yourself is when you'll start to be able to set boundaries with others. A lot of the times when I do things alone, I feel like the main character of my life and I think that is so important and such a big part of taking control of your own life and really living a happy, healthy life. Spending time alone makes you more independent. You don't really need to rely on anyone else. The second habit is to plan. Whether this is making daily to-do lists or planning out what your week or your month is going to look like, this is really, really helpful, especially if you set goals. I will write down everything I need to do for the day. Those are going to be my goals, whether that is yoga, edit a YouTube video. Once I finish that, that goal is done. I do this throughout the weeks and months too. I will set my intentions for the week, whether that's to focus, reset, re-energize, whatever it is. Planning is super important to make sure you are moving towards the direction that you want to move in. A tip that I have found super, super helpful is to always put in potential events into your calendar even if you aren't sure if you're gonna go you might want to save that time for future reference if I just don't put in my calendar I will totally forget and the event will pass and then I'll regret not going there are also events that you might not feel like going to at the moment but you might see that it is a beneficial event third is to reach out to old and current friends I think it's super important to stay connected with friends loneliness is a really big problem being isolated from others can really create a negative headspace it's just proven that interacting with others can be super beneficial to the human mind. Fourth is meditation. Meditation helps you declutter your mind, whether that's being able to be conscious of what your thinking patterns are, understanding where your thoughts are coming from, or even just understanding your own feelings. Meditation also helps you stay in the present moment. You're focusing all at once. You're not thinking about the past, the future. You're simply staying in the moment. This also increases your attention span. The longer you're able to stay in a meditative state, the longer your mind will be able to focus on one thing at a time you will see that this impacts how long you can read for or how long you could work for i am a huge overthinker and meditation has helped me really stop overthinking so much i personally use headspace and youtube headspace does have a premium membership you can pay for and you could access all of their meditations but check in with your county the la county health center works with headspace to offer a free membership number five keep your area clean a decluttered area tends to follow a decluttered mind studies have shown that a really messy room has led to stress. I think your physical realm has a lot to do with your mental headspace and in turn your mental headspace has a lot to do with your physical realm. Even the act of cleaning and organizing can be a stress reliever especially if there is a huge mess and after it's clean then it's so nice to look at. It just makes you feel good and proud. Six is to journal. This is one of the most oversaid habits but I seriously believe that it is so so beneficial. A lot of people think that journaling is just writing down what happened during your day or or how you feel that is one way to journal but that's not the only way that you could journal there are millions of prompts there's so many you can find on Pinterest YouTube Instagram journaling really helps you figure out where your mind is at and your true feelings apparently when you write down for a long period of time that's when your subconscious mind come through which is why journaling is often linked to being more self-aware it could really help you keep track of your goals and habits like these and make sure you are on the path you want to be on number seven is to read reading expands your mind whether it's non-fiction or fiction even though fiction books are not real life you're using your imagination to picture how everything is going you're unlocking that creative side of your mind which may not normally get unlocked reading is a great way to stay entertained without using any screens like your phone your laptop non-fiction books are there to help you learn about literally any topic you want there are self-help books on anything money health bug eight is to have a hobby that keeps you learning a really big part of life is to constantly grow and evolve I 
I, along with many other people, really believe that the journey is the fun part, trying to get to where you want to be. Especially when there's a bunch of wealthy people who have achieved way more than they ever expected to, and yet they are still creating new goals. Some examples of hobbies is reading, Skillshare, or even just classes. Number nine is to do a hobby that keeps you creative. Again, the creative human mind is so, so important. It helps you evolve, helps you problem solve. Having a creative hobby just keeps your mind stimulated and excited to keep going. You create something new. It's an exciting aspect of life. I think we can all relate on that feeling when you make a new discovery or you think of a really good idea. It's just such a nice feeling to know that that came from you. The final creative product is something that you could really be proud of, which helps your self-esteem as well. Number 10 is to move your body slash workout and for the reason of feeling good instead of looking good. Today's society and culture focuses so much on people's weight and body image. If your goal is to feel good, live a healthy lifestyle, get stronger, those are the people that tend to consistently work out and actually achieve the goals they want to. It's just a lot easier to burn down, not be as consistent once your goal is to just lose weight because as soon as you lose it, if you just stop working out, you're just going to gain it all back. The more you work out, the easier it is to start doing it to feel good. Working out releases dopamine. Once you keep on working out, your body is going to be sort of addicted to that dopamine. We were made to move. We weren't made to sit down at desks every day and that's just facts. It's not just me saying that. And there are so many different workouts you could do. Yoga, Orange Theory Fitness, running outside, hiking, YouTube video workouts. 11 is acts of kindness for others. I'm such a firm believer in what you give is what you get. Not only that, but doing things for others tends to make you feel good as a person. Why wouldn't you want to feel good as a person? Know that you made a positive impact. It could be the littlest things, paying for the person in front of you. An act of selflessness leads to another. That person that you pay for might just pay for the person behind them. 12 is to be open to change. I think everyone knows that nothing in life is constant. Everything is temporary. People tend to see that as a good and a bad thing. When bad things occur, everything is temporary, so you know it's gonna pass. But when good things occur, everything is temporary, and you know that it's gonna pass. Change really is the only constant in life. Embracing change can be as easy as trying new foods or workouts even, hanging out with new people. Little things like this help train your mind to be open to new experiences. Habit 13 is to wake up early. This is one of the ones that are really oversaid, but waking up early gives you way more time to fit in activities in your day and be more productive. Once you get the ball rolling in the morning, I feel like it's way easier to be productive throughout the whole day. If you wake up at 12 p.m., your mind is like, oh, well, the day's already gone. Might as well try again tomorrow. But if you wake up at like six in the morning and you just start doing a bunch of productive things, your mind's gonna be like, wow, we're doing really good. Let's keep going. And of course, you have to gradually wake up earlier. You can't just jump from like 10 a.m. to 6 a.m., but you could do like 10 a.m. to 9.30 and then 9.30 to 9. Another tip is put your phone across the room, like really across the room, so you have to get up and turn the alarm off. Or if you have an Alexa, use that so that you have to say turn off. Speaking in the morning can wake you up. 14 is to surround yourself by nature. Studies have showed that spending more time outside and surrounded by nature has actually caused positive impacts on people's mental health. There are so many ways to spend time outside. You could simply just walk outside, hike or picnic, beach trips, sitting on your patio. I think activities where you can appreciate nature help you spend more time outside. What I mean by appreciate nature is like sunsets, sunrises, stargazing. Nature is amazing. Number 15 is affirmation. Some people just say that it feels like they're lying to themselves. What I personally do is whenever I say something negative about myself, whether I'm looking in the mirror and I don't like the way I look, as soon as I start saying like, oh, I'm ugly, that is when I will say an affirmation. I think that is easier than in the morning saying, I am beautiful. Once you start replacing negative self-talk with positive affirmations, that makes the transition feel more real. The more often you do it, the more conditioned you'll be. Whenever you negative self-talk, your mind will automatically be like, nope. Number 16 is healthy eating habits. I heard somewhere that like 90% of serotonin comes from your gut, which means that what you eat is super important. And I'm not saying cut out all sugar, carbs, whatever. I think that a balance of everything is so important. I find the 80-20 rule to be helpful. 80% of your eating is healthy eating and then the 20% is unhealthy eating, which means just like processed foods, sugar. This is nice because if you do try to cut out all processed foods, all sugar, you will eventually give in. But once you allow yourself that little space, your mind isn't going to be like, oh my god, I need all these sweets. Your mind is going to be like, okay, I can have those sweets. Habit 17 is to reduce your screen time. I think this is a very obvious one. I don't really need to go in detail. I think we all know how negative social media can be comparing your lives to others. Some ways that you could reduce your screen time is to track your screen time and be aware 
aware of how often you're using your phone and what apps setting limits these are both things that you could do in settings 18 is gratitude it's super important to recognize the things that you do have in your life one of the ways that i have found to be a genuine way to express gratitude is to think about your life a year or a few years ago think about the things that you wanted i can assure you at least one or a few of the things that you used to want is one of the things you have now and you could express gratitude when you first wake up or when you're about to go to sleep think of three things that you're grateful for you are recognizing the things in your life that are good this could be fresh air to breathe access to water access to food access to a platform where you could watch videos like this and learn 19 is to budget and save up money so many books so many youtube videos on how to obviously i am not a financial advisor but what i do is if i want to buy something that's not something i need it's just something i kind of want take the price of that and put that amount of money into savings for example if i wanted a hundred dollar shoes but i didn't really need them i have shoes that are similar i would take a hundred dollars and put that into my savings and then whenever you go to buy something just double check with yourself and be like do i really need this is this worth the price that i'm paying and if it is by all means get it but if the answer to most of those questions are no i think you should save your money habit number 20 is shadow work if you don't know what that is it's you work on the subconscious negative parts about yourself trauma negative thought patterns you recognize it and work through it a lot of the times we have a lot of suppressed trauma that is impacting the way that we are living our lives but we literally don't know what they are shadow work helps you to be more conscious of what they are habit number 21 self-discipline although it is really important to listen to your body and your mind recognize what you need it's still really important to have that self-discipline to do things that you don't necessarily want to do but you have to do or things that would help you in the future this can be like taking hard classes if you want to lose weight but you don't feel like working out although it is really important to have rest days if you just simply don't have self-discipline you will never make it to a workout sometimes you really do need self-discipline to even do the things that will make you feel good start going to therapy start working out start journaling start meditating self-discipline comes with respecting yourself once you learn to love yourself and respect yourself self-discipline will come you will be willing to do things for yourself because you respect yourself to that level habit number 22 is to do what makes you feel good and makes you happy this is the moral of the story all of these habits that i just told you guys leads down to this one where you are doing what makes you happy and what makes you fulfilled all of these habits are just helping you get there these things are what is going to lead you to learn what makes you happy and what makes you unhappy and of course not every single thing that you do in life not every single day is going to be amazing and perfect but that is why you need that self-discipline to go through the bad so that you can reach the good those are my 22 healthy habits for you guys i really hope that this video was helpful and that you guys can integrate these habits into your life if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed go subscribe i love and appreciate you all i will see you guys in my next video bye